So I'm in this town, Yamaska, about 100 kilometers from here. It's raining heavy outside. When I step in this cafe, order a regular poutine, and request to deliver on my table, and I hide myself in the deepest corner of this cafe. I don't want to be seen. I use all my energy to bend, remove my shoes, socks, and the tape to see the blisters that look like tiny, young blueberries with a lot of blood. <laughs> so this cafe lady, she brings the poutine on my table and she sees me holding my foot, which is not a pleasant sight when it's smelling worse than a skunk. <laughs> uh, but in panic, she runs back to the counter and brings whole pack of tissues for me and goes, oh, please take care of these. You want me to call a taxi or a doctor or you need some help? Now listening to this, everyone gathers around me. <laughs> and in the sea of calm, I ask, do you have a needle? <laughs> Unfortunately, no one has a needle. But good thing, I'm first aid trained. I open my bag and take out the hunting knife and slit open the blisters, all four of them, one by one. Blood drips down the floor. And I apologize to the cafe lady. Oh, I'll clean that once I'm done as I continue to wipe my toes. My feet are burning in pain and I collapse. My poutine is chilling now. <laughs> so I can barely hear the voice of people that are talking about me, I guess. <laughs> and, and realizing it's getting dark outside, I get up. I open my eyes like in, in a quasi-automatic gesture, and the cafe lady is still standing there. But now she has bandages and ointment in her hand. Wow, that helps. <laughs> But all this time in my head, I'm just reciting the name of the place where I must reach tonight. It's third day. I have run 220 kilometers already. And I still have 150 more to go in less than two days to make it to Old Port before 375th birthday of Montreal. I'm running 375 kilometers over five days from Quebec City to Montreal to pay tribute to my home on her 375th birthday. And I recall the time when I was making this decision to first move here. So scared I was. Montreal is the first city for me to live outside of India, and I didn't know much French. So I moved here, everything was fine, and initially I was living with this old French man in north of the island. Three weeks with him, everything is fine and he threatened to kill me one night. <laughs> now, I don't know how Quebec law functions, so... <laughs> so, no case was reported. But in hindsight, I felt I could not trust people anymore. So, running from Quebec City to Montreal all by myself, in a quest of exploring this province and its beautiful people, it was a very challenging decision. Uh, I still don't speak much French. So will I be able to communicate with people I meet? Will I receive any kindness when I'm out there struggling? All questions. And rain was forecasted for all days planned. So it was decided. I will run in the day, will sleep in the night, and I'll run at least 70 kilometers per day. The D-Day arrived. <laughs> so I'll go solo. I'll just carry a bag on my shoulders that will contain water, food, extra clothes, one extra pair of shoes just in case needed, headlamp, map, and first aid, and other random stuff that I think I will need. So my bag weighed nine kilos when I started. And after all the rain, it was probably 10. And in order to get this done, I decided I will survive one day at a time. So on first day, I, I couch surf in this beautiful village hosted by a lady named Nicole. So when I reached there, she wasn't there. Uh, I was received by her husband. But she had left a note for me to meet next morning. So in the during the breakfast, her husband introduced, introduced me to her beautiful paintings and sculptures in the basement. 
Now, I didn't know where I was staying this night, so I had to start running as early as possible. So I left without meeting Nicole. Later that morning, a car nearly runs over me. So this car stops right in front of me. The door opens. A woman comes out of the car. She walks up to me with a smile and says, are you Gaurav? Who knows me in Quebec? <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole. She had driven 20 kilometers down the highway just to see me and give me tortilla. I don't know how to pronounce it still. That was a meat pie <laughs> that she had baked for me. I was in awe and surprised that how did she even find me? I could have been anywhere in Quebec. But I'm grateful that she did. So second day went just like first, a lot of rains, running, sleeping in a trailer for the first time. On third day, I have succumbed to the pain cave. And I'm counting bodies of dead animals I see on the highway <laughs> that have died because of the flood just to keep my attention away from my feet. On fourth day, when I get up, I feel as though my body has destroyed, and I continue to busherville the final checkpoint. And, and I'm being hosted by my friend's mother today, and she has promised good food. <laughs> good enough motivation to keep going as fast as possible, 70 kilometers down to reach. I, I couldn't sleep last night because of immense pain in my feet. So tonight, I'm looking forward to sleep as well. Against all odds, I reach Pusherville finally after 10 in the night. My host, uh, Danielle, she, she had given up on me, thinking I'll never show up when I ring the doorbell. And she had been following my updates on Facebook and uh, for the past three days. And she had modified her restroom into almost a clinic. <laughs> with everything that she thought I might need decorated beautifully on a table with a warm tub with baking soda to clean my feet. And not just this, okay? A, my life's most tasty meal served fresh in midnight. <laughs> Unlike other days, I get up late next morning, a quick breakfast, and I'm out for chasing the last 70 kilometers. Before I leave, she packs almonds and cashews for me to munch on. I feel as though I've got my mother back, albeit just for a day. 375 kilometers, 112 hours, and 28 minutes later, I'm sitting under the clock tower at Old Port in the cool breeze and bright sunshine of May 17th, when I'm elated and I'm celebrating the 375th birthday of my home, Montreal. There's, there are no more checkpoints to chase today. But I do have my share of challenges. How would I get up? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so I'm going to move back home to India next weekend. And I'm, I've started to ask myself this question. Where is this place called home? And tonight I get my answer. I am my home. Wherever I will go, my home will be here. In a few days when I'll board the flight to India, a part of me will be left behind in Canada as my footprints of that trail, amazing conversations and the people I met on the course of my stay, not just that run. And the stories I shared like tonight. I don't know if I'll get to come back, but Whenever I will return, I'll know I'm home. Thank you. <laughs>